G'day everyone! So I've been doing YouTube for over a year now, and a lot's changed. I set out to make videos as a way to keep me on track with my personal projects, and it ended up turning into something much different and bigger than I ever expected. And it's got me thinking about what the future looks like. Recently I saw this great video by Lucio Games, where he goes over his game dev roadmap for 2024. And besides being an enjoyable watch, it's inspired me to create my own roadmap for 2025. But what exactly is a roadmap? Well, basically, it's this giant picture graph showing what general tasks you want to get done to complete a goal. For example, a design company might have a list of features that contribute to improving certain aspects of their app, but for me, it's mostly going to be the types of videos and projects I want to work on. As stated in Lucio's video, you can't really copy anyone else's roadmap, because it's a very personal thing since everyone has a different starting point. But what you can do is take inspiration from others, see what worked and what didn't, and combine it all into your own plan. But before I can even start a roadmap, I need a goal, something to strive towards. And I've decided on two that I think go hand in hand with one another, both of which I want to achieve by the end of 2025. First is a YouTube goal. I want to hit 1000 subscribers. And the second is a personal goal. I want to release my first game. Okay, I've committed to it now. I've put it out into the universe. I'm already regretting this. What have I done? No, no. Have faith in yourself. You've got this. Okay, here's how I want to do it. First of all, I want to give myself a big project to work on. Now I don't know exactly how big I want to go just yet, I'm thinking anywhere between 6 and 12 months at the moment. The main thing I want to do here is actually finish a project. I've done really well when the time frame has been kinda short, but the moment a project seems to extend beyond a few months, I tend to lose motivation. So I want to head into this next project with everything laid out and ready to go. But it's going to require a bit of effort up front. Make a GDD, plan all the features out, make sure the scope is manageable give myself plenty of time to test, and bonus time at the end to refine. My hope is that by planning everything out and having several milestones, it will be easier for me to stick to the project and see it to completion. The ultimate end goal is to release a game, no matter the condition, as long as it's playable of course. I tend to be a bit of a perfectionist, and while it gives me a great eye for detail, it can definitely hold me back at times. I can obsess over the little details that ultimately don't matter. I want to treat this project as one big draft, try a bit of everything. Code, design, art, audio, publishing, marketing, just to get my skills up. You rarely get it right the first time, and you learn the most from doing rather than theorizing. So instead of planning how I want to make my perfect game, I'm just going to do it. It won't be perfect, or pretty, but it doesn't need to be. I want to learn as much as I can, and then use all the knowledge I've gained and put it to work on a second big project in the future. But going all in on one project for up to a year would probably get a little draining over time, especially with my attention span, so I want to be able to split my time up with some other ideas. One of my thoughts is to focus on doing some mini projects. These might be small little one-off game jam things like I've made before, but the thing I really want to experiment with is building out my own personal code library. Some of you may have noticed that my inspector looks a little different, and that's because I built a custom transform tool with some nifty reset and increment buttons that I often use. And I want to make more of these, whether they're similar tools for rec transform, or mini features I tend to have to remake, like a stat system or save system that I can build off. Like whenever I make a game, I always tend to build out my user interface code in the same way. Instead of remaking a UI system every time, how great would it be to have my own UI that I can just drop into a project without any effort? The main focus would be on keeping things reusable and modular, with a large emphasis on Unity's built-in test runner. It'll be a good challenge for me to make these packages reliable and adaptable, but also provide enough value for me to want to reuse them. This way, it'll make it really easy for me to build out and prototype ideas quickly. With all of the basics already created, it means I can make games faster and jump right into the unique parts of a game without worrying about forging the foundation. Now if you hadn't already guessed, I'm a programmer by trade, but it takes a lot more than code alone to make a game which is why one of the other areas I really want to focus on is design. What makes a game fun? What separates an enjoyable experience from a boring one? Besides making games and testing them on people, I'd say one of the best things to do is simply play games. See what worked for successful games and try to incorporate my own version of those mechanics. But I don't want to just passively play games. I want to start learning how to break down a game into its basic components. Start to understand why certain design choices were made and understand how much better or worse a game could be with a few minor tweaks. 
There's a series on TikTok I discovered by a creator called I Game You Watch, where he would pick up a game for an hour and see if he liked it or not. I found it interesting hearing his verdict, especially when it came to a game I enjoyed like Lies of P, which he utterly hated. Fuck, man. This fucking parade master is pissing me off. Come here. Next! There's no need to keep playing this game. I'm not gonna beat this fucking guy. At the end of the day, I really don't give a fuck about the game. I really don't give a fuck about this game. And I think I want to do something similar. Pick up a new game, play it for a few hours, but then try to break down why I found it fun or not. What added to the experience and what took away from it. I should be able to easily try a wide range of games, expose myself to games that I wouldn't typically play, slowly hone my eye for design, and hopefully pick up a few tricks to incorporate into my own projects too. And the last thing I want to do is continue to share experiences from my game dev career. I always find there's something comforting about hearing from people who are in your position, knowing that someone else was going through your struggles, and learning how they navigated the daunting challenges in front of them. I've made plenty of mistakes, but I've learned a whole lot from those errors, and I want to share those lessons with others in the hope that they can avoid falling into the same traps I did. I'm nowhere near an expert, I'm still a junior, I'm still trying to get my together, but I feel like that allows me to provide a more relatable perspective. Since I'm still finding my feet, those fears and struggles are still fresh in the back of my mind, and I find it easier to relate to someone going through the same things rather than someone 10-15 years down the road only looking back in hindsight, especially with how quickly things change. What was good and relevant then might not work so much now. It's also a good way for me to reflect on my own journey and see how far I've come. We're always looking forward to the next thing, but it's good to take a break and appreciate everything you've done and see just how far you've come. Now, those are the four areas that I want to focus on. I feel like this is doable. Maybe a little ambitious, but better to aim higher than lower. And this will really help me grow as a game developer, but also as a YouTuber. That big project is gonna need constant progress and I'm probably always gonna be working on it in the background. But then to keep my sanity, I'll separate my work on the big project with an idea from one of the other three areas, depending on what I'm vibing at the time. Now, like most well-laid plans, they go to sh so by no means is this locked in, but hopefully this will act as a bit of an anchor and can help guide me when I get lost or distracted. I've already got a few ideas in mind, and I'm keen to hit the ground running and get working on those. So that's my plan for next year, and it's got me pretty excited. It's loose enough where it gives me enough freedom to experiment and try new things, but firm enough that I have a direct goal I'm working towards. But I'd love to hear from all of you. What do you think of the roadmap? Do you think I can pull it off? Do you have any plans or goals for yourself for the next year? Let me know in the comments below. And be sure to like and subscribe, I've got a bunch of new content coming your way. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers everyone.